Want to learn about building codes for safety glass requirements in certain windows? Well, here are some clips from my on-demand course, IRC Chapter 3, The Human Element, available only at buildingcodecollege.com. The 2021 International Residential Code details seven locations in Section R308.4 where there's a higher probability someone will stumble and fall into or through nearby glass. These locations require safety glazing, and here's a clip about one of them. The next hazardous location is glazing in windows. When I was working for a home builder in the late 90s, I remember the rule of thumb that all windows less than 18 inches to the floor had to be tempered, but actually just safety glazed, right? And in the 1971 predecessor to the IRC, that's all it took to require safety glazing. In 1983, another condition was added. The glazed area had to also be greater than nine square feet. And after another decade, another condition was added in 1992. The top of the glazing had to be more than 36 inches above the floor. And finally, in the modern code, it also states that the glazing has to be three feet or closer horizontally to a walking surface. So we see here, it's zero distance from a walking surface. And that would include a location like this, if this distance was 36 inches or less. Okay, so let's look at this window assembly. The upper glazing is more than nine square feet, but it's more than 18 inches to the floor, so not required to be safety glazed. The bottom is less than nine square feet, so also not required. And it's also less than 36 inches to the top, so double not required. Now, in this scenario, the glass is less than 18 inches to the floor and more than 36 inches to the top. So if it's more than nine square feet, then safety glazing is required. But of course, there's that exception again for decorative glazing. And then there's a new exception for this location, which is honestly more of a fix for a mistake. A protective bar can be installed in front of the glazing. And it has to be installed between 34 to 38 inches above the walking surface. And now, safety glazing is not required. And this is the same height as handrails. So the idea is that we're more likely to grab the bar and brace ourselves falling towards the glass. We also won't fall through the glass. Now the bar has to resist a 50 pound per linear foot horizontal load, which I'm not sure how you're going to actually test. And the bar can deflect but just not enough to contact the glass. The bar also stops you from falling through the glass, as I mentioned. Now, finally, the bar has to be at least an inch and a half in cross-sectional height. This helps make it visible for us to see and for us to grab and brace ourselves against. So this is really a good subject to get right at plan review because no one proposes this bar as a design, only as a repair. Really, it's basically a wound, a band-aid over a wound that will never heal. Um, but it will heal because you know where ugly band-aids go when we have no use for them after final inspection, right? So like the previous location, this is not mandated by the consumer product safety standard. So either standard can be used. And notice how there's no requirements when less than nine square feet, because we already discussed that's one of the conditions that require safety glazing. The fourth hazardous location under section 308.4.4 is guards and railings. And for this one, it's simple. All of it has to be safety glazed. No exceptions. If it's in a guard or railing, there you go. Now, this isn't a Consumer Product Safety Commission hazardous location, so the ANSI standard can be used. And since this location isn't listed in the safety glazing table with the different classes based on nine square feet that we previously went over, then the glazing must meet class A, which is the larger 48 inch drop in the test. Now there's a subsection to this part, but it's really not about safety glazing. So I'll discuss this in the next session. I hope those clips were helpful to you. For the full on-demand course, go to buildingcodecollege.com and click the link to the course catalog. Near the top of the list of courses, you'll find IRC Chapter 3, The Human Element. You can watch the first course video by simply clicking the thumbnail image. 
for four months of 24-7 access to the full three-hour ICC-approved course, it's only $45 and a few clicks away. But you can get 10% off any enrollment using the coupon code YouTube.